startling blasphemy arrest. Chinese worker airlifted to safety in Pakistan. A dramatic turn of events unfolded in Pakistan when a Chinese worker, identified only as Mr. Tian, was arrested on April 16th, 2023, for allegedly insulting the Prophet Muhammad and Islam. At the heart of this intense situation lies a workplace disagreement. Mr. Tian allegedly chastised two local drivers for taking excessive time for prayers, which ultimately led to accusations of him insulting Prophet Muhammad. The arrest came after en enraged residents rallied together and blocked a critical highway demanding Mr. Tian's arrest. Swift action by Pakistani police officers led to Mr. Tian being airlifted by helicopter to ensure that he was not lynched in an act of mob violence. Mr. Tian may face trial under Pakistan's harsh blasphemy laws if investigators find him guilty. This high stakes charge could potentially lead to a death sentence. So, guys, this is this is like crazy, but also very significant because anyone who knows anything about blasphemy knows that Pakistan is basically one of the worst places in the world to be accused of blasphemy and also where it happens with the highest frequency, at least that we can record. Right. Um, and. This is very significant because usually it is only other Pakistani nationals, Pakistani citizens that face these allegations, that deal with the consequences, that end up getting lynched and murdered in the street over it. Now we had a situation, I would believe it was at the end of 2021, where a Sri Lankan man um, was brutally brutally lynched in Pakistan by his own workers that he managed in a factory. And that really wrote, made the, the blasphemy situation, brought it to the international stage on a different level, right? Because, because it was a foreign national who was killed. And suddenly Imran Khan came out and spoke against it, blah, blah, blah. He never gives that attention when it's just ordinary Pakistani citizens. But he did for that man. Now, with this, this is very significant because China's ties in Pakistan right now, especially with the Belt and Road Initiative, are extremely important. China is investing a lot in many different forms of our infrastructure around the country. And some of these infrastructure sites in places of development have been bombed before and killing Chinese citizens. Uh, there was even an, I think there was even an attack on like a hotel where an embassy worker was staying before. Now, some of this violence towards the Chinese is because of, you know, the underlying Baluchi separatist insurgency. So it's not necessarily religious, you know, but this is explicitly religious. <laughs> so my understanding is, is that there was this Chinese man who was working in some capacity as a manager at um, an infrastructure site and in charge of some truck drivers. And he complained, apparently, that the truck drivers were taking too long to pray. Or maybe that after they did their prayers, they were lollygagging, they weren't getting back to work, blah, blah, blah. And he reprimanded them. And somehow... This turned into the accusation that he was being like disrespectful when talking about their prayers or whatever, whatever. This turned into the full-blown accusation that he insulted the Prophet Muhammad. And the local workers and the local residents either went on strike and then they blocked the most critical highway in the entire area. So they stopped everything. Everything stopped because they cut off this choke point, right? And demanding that he be brought forward to them, demanding his death, just straight up right then and there, until the Pakistani authorities literally had to come and airlift this man to safety. So it's, it's so crazy. Based on the reports that I read, um, the Chinese embassy has not commented on this yet. But they said that they will protect their citizens to the full extent of the law and, you know, do what they have to do. Um, I don't know if this man will face charges. Maybe he'll just end up getting deported because it, it's not safe for him anymore. It's not safe for him anymore. But this is going to be really 
significant to see this influencing not only foreigners, but foreigners that are as strategically important as the Chinese relationship to Pakistan is. So this, I think this could continue to be a contention that we see again in the future. Yeah. I don't know if people understand how dependent Pakistan is to Chinese money right now. This is like a, and right now China, um, Pakistan is desperate, desperate for money and trade and influence because it, things are not good in Pakistan. Things are re- financially very, very unstable. So you cannot afford to lose China as an ally, especially right now. And you have you know you've made your bed and now you need to lie and lie in it because you, you you pakistan's government is responsible for using these radical groups as a weapon and now it's costing themselves it's like coming for it's coming for for, for themselves so this is this is, is basically frankenstein's mus- monster going for dr frankenstein this is what's happening here um and again this is a you know how we predicted that uh, way, way back before when progressives, you know, leftist people were so in bed with the Islamic groups and they had like such a, you know, cozy relationship with each other. And we, before all of the whole LGBT thing became a big topic, we said like at some point this marriage is going to break apart like it does historically like usually we have the marriage between leftists and islamists and at some point everything falls apart and we we predicted that over lgbt because lgbt was a red line for both groups and we're like this is going to end up in a divorce and it's going to be ugly and that ended up happening so this might be a similar situation because um you know, China doesn't f around when it comes to projects and eff- efficiency and trying to get the you know trying to get the <laughs> you know get things done the way they wanted to, especially given that how China is so desperate into making sure its projects beyond its borders work because it needs to hit GDP targets and it doesn't have enough internal uh, consumption to hit those GDP targets. So it needs to have government investing, uh, but government investing internally has made, has hit a limit because there's not enough more projects that make sense that it could invest internally. So it needs investments outside of its borders to hit the GDP targets that it needs to hit. So it's going around everywhere, like it's like all these initiatives that it has all around the world is so that it makes it, it's able to achieve that. So this and Pakistan and Afghanistan is is major for for China, especially because it goes through all the uh, you know the 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 economic corridors that is trying mm-hmm. to connect with each other, right? And also because of all the minerals that is standing there. But you saw how important the energy. Uh, sources it is for, for in, in the Middle East, in Iran and Saudi Arabia, and China just went in and start stopped a few that was like unimaginable. Like because we know Iran and Saudi Arabia are enemies, are such you, you know like for Saudi Arabia is a bigger enemy to the Islamic Republic, not Iran. I should say the Islamic Republic of the government of Iran that than it is between Iran and the Iran's government and Israel or Iran's government in America. And oh, we saw yeah. China. Yeah. So, but you saw how they just made peace because of China. Like you guys need to cut it out. You guys are my energy sources. Right. So I wonder what are they going to like, how is this going to work between Pakistan and China? Like, is this, this is going to be a major source of conflict. And we were always, we always knew that this is going to happen. China, when it comes to Islam and radical Islam standing in its way, it it goes through it like a bulldozer, like you know when it's when it can, it doesn't it doesn't f around like I said. So now I in mean, Pakistan, talk to the Uyghurs, God damn. I know, I know. So here now, if radical is Islamic radicalism is standing in its way, I don't know what is that going to do for the relationship between China and Pakistan. Because it can't they, be. They're not going to be able to talk. When that yeah. bus got bombed a few years ago, it shut down everything for years yeah and china did not go back into that area until the pakistani state could ensure the safety of its workers Mm. 
and this is going to be another contention again. But if you go into the show notes, I actually have, um, I included something that we can show that I think um, shows part of the arrest. Okay, it's a, it's a Twitter post? Yeah. Ooh, okay, here. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Wait, I'm do, you want to, do you want me to play the video? Or no? Yeah, so it says, here we go again. Angry mob demanding the arrest of a Chinese citizen who committed, quote-unquote, blasphemy in Khoisan. Um, yeah, let's play the audio. Okay. Whoa. Oh my God. Holy crap. Oh my God. I would be scared. So the guy is still, it, he's arrested, right? Yes. So look at, imagine being, but you remember in Pakistan being arrested and being held by police still doesn't mean you're safe because these people can overpower oh, the police. No. Oh, and they have, like, I would be, look at this mob. I would be freaking scared. Yeah. I would be afraid. Like imagine if you were in a cell and there was a mob outside like this wanting to tear you to pieces. That's mm -hmm. a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And imagine other Chinese people. Like, this is not a place you want to send Chinese people to. Because and there are police remember, that sympathize with this mob. 100%. What? Also, remember, guys, you don't need to blaspheme for this to happen to you. Yeah. You just need to be accused of blaspheming. If somebody doesn't like you in Pakistan, all they have to do is spread a rumor, and then you're screwed. You just have to like imagine you're working and you're like tr you're treating an employee and the employee is not doing what they're supposed to do and you say something that they don't like and you're Chinese. They could end you by just spreading a rumor. Mm -hmm. Or this you're like, not hey a guys, good, this is you're being lazy and you're not getting back to work after your prayers. Can you pick up the pace and go back to work? And they're like, oh, what did you say? <laughs> What? This is not a friendly environment. This is not an environment you want to be working in. This is very hostile. Mm -hmm. By the way, we have um, a celebrity in the live chat. Yes, Horace Sultan is here. Hi, Horace. And he's talking about the, the Chinese workers that got bombed in the bus a few years ago. He's saying, and they made the Pakistani government pay compensation to the deceased Chinese workers' families. Well, to be fair, I think they're owed that compensation. Yeah. Um, okay, we have we a got, lot of super chats. And yeah, comments. a lot of stuff yeah. to cover. Asian American, our local Chinese American uh, and uh, Chinese myth encyclopedia <laughs> gave mm -hmm. us a $5 super chat and said, my siblings and multiple gods who stem from the same eternal name beyond comprehension, stop defending nonsense. <laughs> so they seem like, <laughs> and then I like this one. We shall see who wins, Muhammad or the god of wealth. Tsai uh, Shen Yi. I think ultimately, oh, yeah. I think the god of wealth will reign supreme. Always, 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 always. Yeah. I would put my money on the Chinese gods right now. <laughs> I will put my money on the god of money. Yeah, he's also saying that the uh, uh, Chinese, no, no, Communist Party of China needs some face right now. They need to, they do need mm. to save some face right now. And also, <laughs> Asian American is saying. Abrahamics can unalive each other around their preferred fan fiction, but the one true God is the God of wealth. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Mm. And also, <laughs> this is giving the um, uh, Communist Party of China state atheism a lot of ammo. <laughs> yeah, this is like, they, they, you know what? You might, this is, CC, and the CPC might go around and say, like, see, this is why we need, we clean this stuff. I, I mean, I don't endorse them. This is not the right conclusion, right? But like, see, guys, this is why we don't tolerate. This is why we put people in camps. Again, this is not the right conclusion, but they might go around, like, look at, look at the mess that we have to deal with in Pakistan. So mm. this is why China works, because we, 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 we shut these things down. Oh, yeah. God. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, Mustafa is Again, saying, not the right I, can't, conclusion. I can't speak yeah. for Pakistan, but spending time in Sudan and Oman, there are a lot of Asian Pacific Islander hate, and they're all based on religion. The Chinese do face a lot of racism around the world. I'm not going to lie. It's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Well, now in Iran, they're facing a lot of hate. Some, some, not because of religion, but because of their them being the Chinese government being close to the Islamic Republic. So well, exactly. We have a different. Yeah, we have a different kind of racism there, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. so Selva, by the way, handed out uh, five memberships to people. Thank you so much, Selva. Oh wow! Uh, nice. We, Thank you. We got a compliment from Robin saying Susanna and Armin are great. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. I and try. You highlighted. You highlighted this one. <laughs> I honestly, saying, I bear witness that there is no God but Armin and Susanna. Love be upon her, is in the messenger <laughs> of Armin. Okay. <laughs> okay. You can now get the sexiest blasphemous art ever known to mankind for free. Too sexy to show most of it here on YouTube. We draw Muhammad, Hindu goddesses, sexy hijabi art, Jesus, Mother Mary. Japanese gods, Greek gods, and much, much more. Click on the link below where it says get our free blasphemous art.